I give you assignment uh, for the rest of uh, group one cation analysis, right? And the do the do that is today. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys already work on it because it's um it's mainly for for your knowledge since uh, uh I won't be able to finish the whole content of the group one cation in the class. Okay, now. So let's move to our fourth meeting. Yeah, uh, we will be learning about group two cation. Yeah, group two cation. <clears throat> now, so last week, uh, can you refresh my mind? Uh, what are what are the member of group one cation? Anybody can uh, tell me. What are the examples that are classified as a group one cation? Lead, mercury, and silver. Lead, mercury, and silver. Yeah. Argentine. Lead, mercury, silver, and silver is uh, argentum. But remember, lead is lead, uh, uh, mercury is mercury one, right? It's not mercury 2 because mercury 2 will be belong to a uh, group 2 cation. Now, so for uh, this meeting, yeah, the metal will be more. The group 2 cation is a lot. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9, 9 type of uh, cation. What are those? Uh, mercury 2, lead 2, bismuth, bismuth 2, copper 2, copper 1, cadmium 2, arsenic 3 and 5, antimony 3, uh, 3 and 5, and then tin 2 and 4. Similar with last week, I won't be able to finish the whole thing. Yeah. So, uh, please cooperate with me. So, I won't give you a routine task. I just need to give you guys a, sort of like a, a independent study. Yeah. Because um, I won't be able to finish it. Uh, the whole, the whole, the whole cathode in one meeting. Okay. <clears throat> now. So group reagent in this cat in this case will be hydrogen sulfide uh, in the in the form of gas or saturated solution. So this is this is will be the uh, the group reagent. Let me open the source of my lecture so that. Uh, <clears throat> so that I won't make a mistake. Yeah. So like I mentioned to you guys, yeah, I get this uh, topic, uh, I get the the source is uh, Fogel. Yeah, Fogel. So you guys can uh, try to uh, ask your, <clears throat> your senior, class senior, maybe they have the, the book and you can uh, share it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> now, next, the group reaction, yeah, have a different uh, precipitates of color. So, for example, mercury to sulfide, it will give us a black color. Lead to sulfide also give us black. And copper to sulfide also give us black color. Yeah. <coughs> so mercury, lead, copper give us a black precipitate.
Okay. Now, for cadmium, bismuth, arsenic, arsenic 3, and arsenic 5, all of, uh, uh, they gave like yellow for cadmium, bismuth for brown, arsenic will be yellow, uh, arsenic 3 yellow, and also arsenic 5 will be yellow. <clears throat> so you can see different cation will react differently with sulfide. Okay, <clears throat> next is we have antimony. Antimony 3, antimony 5 give us orange color. Tin, uh, tin 2 sulfide, tin 4 sulfide. It gave us different color in this case. For tin 2, uh, it will give us brown. And tin 4 will give us yellow. <clears throat> So memorization and memorization again. So start memorizing from now so that later uh, you will be able to uh, work on your midterm test. Hmm. Finish this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, uh, so we have group one and then we have group two, right? For group two, yeah, it will divide it into two subgroup. The first subgroup we call it copper, copper subgroup. And then the second subgroup is called arsenic subgroup. Yeah. There are <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, five cation uh, under the copper subgroup. That is uh, mercury two, lead two, bismuth three, copper two, and then cadmium through two, yeah. And then for arsenic subgroup, uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six cation, such as uh, arsenic three, arsenic five, antimony three, antimony five, tin two, and tin four. And how we uh, divide these two subgroup is by looking at the solubility of its sulfides in the ammonium polysulfide. Yeah, whether it is uh, it has precipitates or whether it is completely dissolved. Yeah. So the the basic the basis for division is the solubility of the sulfide in ammonium poly polysulfide. <clears throat> Finish this one? Not yet? Okay, I give you guys to, uh, time to finish this. Mm. 
Okay, let's continue. So, copper and arsenic, you can see the difference here. Uh, sulfide of the copper subgroup, yeah, so meaning this whole cation sulfide, yeah, <clears throat> it's in, insoluble, insoluble in ammonium polysulfide. In contrast, arsenic subgroup will be dissolved in ammonium polysulfide. Okay, so you see the difference, right? Copper, the sulfide of copper, uh, insoluble in ammonium polysulfide, whereas the arsenic subgroup, yeah, will be dissolved in uh, ammonium polysulfide and then it will form a thiosol. Yeah. So why why arsenic subgroup dissolve in ammonium polysulfide? Because they form a thiosol. Okay, next. So arsenic subgroup here. This is this is one one term you need to remember about arsenic subgroup. Arsenic subgroup have ampoteric character. So what is ampoteric character? Means it means that if they if they have oxide, yeah, the oxide will form salt with both acid and base. So their, their oxide uh, can react with acid and base. That's why we call it ampoteric character. <coughs> now, so let's see the example. Arsenic three oxide you can react it with hydrochloric acid, six molar, and you can see it will form as arsenic three cation. And also, uh, you can see here arsenic three oxide can be can be dissolved also in sodium hydroxide through molar, and this this, this time arsenide anion are formed. So that's why here you can see it has ampoteric character. If it reacts with acid, the cation will be formed. If it reacts with base, the anion will be formed. Yeah, so you understand now what is the meaning that arsenic has ampoteric character. Yeah, let's see the reaction. So arsenic 3, yeah, arsenic oxide, you dissolve with a hydrogen chloride and it will form a cation, arsenic cation. 
Whereas when you dissolve uh, arsenic oxide in sodium hydroxide, it, it forms arsenide anion. So this is the meaning by ampoteric character of arsenide. <clears throat> So in your note, you can you can highlight this one and this one, yeah, to to make sure that you understand the ampoteric character. So you can highlight the cation and then the the hydrogen chloride, and then you highlight <clears throat> the arsenide ion, anion and the hydroxide. So you can see both have the same uh, arsenide oxide, but it will produce different different uh, cation or anion uh, because it has a different uh, an, another reactant is different because the first one is hydrogen chloride uh, the second one is hydroxide yeah so you can put in your note uh, to to emphasize what you learn from this uh, reaction <clears throat> Finish this? Not yet. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> so remember uh, how we divide a uh, copper subgroup and uh, our arsenic subgroup by looking at the reaction, whether both of the sulfide, uh, like how the sulfate react with ammonium polysulfate. Uh, yeah. And remember that if the sulfide yeah, dissolve in ammonium polysulfide, it means there will be a formation of thiosol. Yeah, so the dissolution of arsenic trisulfate, yeah, <clears throat> in ammonium sulfate is due to uh, the formation of a thiosulfate. And you can see here, it started with anhydrous, uh, anhydrous thio acid, yeah. Uh, so anhydrous thio acid and then anhydrous thio base, and it will form a thio salt. And the thio salt is uh, dissolved.
Okay. Let's see here. So we have uh, arsenic sulfide. Yeah. We react with uh, ammonium polysulfide. So that's why this is a thio salt. So you can see, remember last week we we, we learned if we have a, a ion like this, it means like the the, the reactant here, the, the chemical here is dissolved. Unless it has down arrow like this, then it means a precipitate. So you can see here, arsenic sulfide is a precipitate. When we react with ammonium polysulfate, it became it became a thio salt and it's dissolved. Okay, now, <clears throat> now there is an exception in arsenic subgroup. Yeah, so what is the ar 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 exception? So all sulfide of the arsenic subgroup, usually it will dissolve uh, in ammonium sulfide and the, it won't have a color. So will be it will be color colorless. But there is an exception. The exception is tin to sulfate, sulfide. Now, so how we can we can dissolve tin to sulfide? Uh, we need to have ammonium polysulfide here. Uh, so ammonium polysulfate, we react with tin to sulfide, and the tin to sulfide will act as an oxidizing agent. When we react tin to sulfide with ammonium polysulfide, we have what we call thiostenate ion. And remember, if there is iron, how the solution will be? Will it have precipitation or will it be dissolved? It will dissolve. So that's why this is, this is a precipitate, right? We react with ammonium polysulfate. It will dissolve. Why it dissolve? Because it forms thio standard ion. This is the reaction, yeah. S N S. This is a precipitate. We reacted with ammonium polysulfate. It became thiostenic iron. Yeah. Tin in here is by phalen two oxidation state, but when it's in thiostenic it become tetraphalan. That's why we call ammonium polysulfate as what? As what agent? As what agent we call it? Oxidizing. Oxidizing agent. agent. And we can see it from the reaction also because it started with two yeah, by five by phalen tin, at it become tetraphalan tin. <clears throat> so those are the things that uh, you need to understand. Yeah, understand. When you understand, you will start memorizing it. Yeah. So you need to study from the beginning. You cannot like uh, do it later. Like maybe like 
one day before your midterm test, you cannot do that. You won't be able to succeed in the test, especially because we are offline uh, exam also. We will have offline exam. So there is no way uh, unless you try to cheat uh, by writing down something in your paper on your desk. Yeah, but there, there is no way you can understand in, in short time. Yeah, so you need to study from the beginning. <coughs> now, finish this one. Not yet. Not yet? Now, so let's see oxidation oxidation uh, process oxidation process. Now, we if we have arsenic three, antimony three, tin two, uh, we can oxidize it to arsenic five, antimony five, and tin four. Yeah, so. <clears throat> so this oxidation oxidation process, uh, we can use it to uh, to classify to classify the the cation. Okay, sorry. I need to take care of uh, some things first. That's why I mute my audio. Now next, so so if if the lower oxidation state can be oxidized, it means the higher oxidation state also can be reduced, right? So it means 
there is a oxidation reduction potential for each of a cation in the copper subgroup yeah and the oxidation reduction uh, potential uh, will depend on pH yeah pH so it means if we want to perform uh, oxidation reduction reaction in each of the cation in the copper subgroup no arsenic subgroup sorry it means we need to choose appropriate appropriate pH for the reaction so different pH will give us a different oxidation state yeah Okay, <clears throat> finish this. Now, so let's see. Uh, let's see how we can identify mercury to ions. So the the the, the next slide will will explain uh, the reaction of mercury to ions. Yeah. <clears throat> now. So remember, at the beginning, the group reaction will be hydrogen sulfide, and the hydrogen sulfide can be uh, can be in the form of gas or saturated solution. Okay. Now, when we already have the sulfide of each of cation, yeah, if we mix it with a dilute hydrochloric acid. Yeah, the mercury sulfate will be transformed into mercury to chlorosulfide, and it will be in a white precipitate form. Yeah, <clears throat> and it won't stay longer because over time it will decompose. How it will decompose? If we add more amount of hydrogen sulfide. So if, if we have a mercury sulfate, right? We added a little bit hydrogen, hydrochloric acid. It will form a, a white precipitate. And the white precipitate, we call it mercury 2 chlorosulfide. And after that, if we added more hydrogen sulfide yeah then the white precipitate will be changing into a black precipitate and the black precipitate is due to the mercury to sulfide Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
So you can see here like uh, this is only mercury, yeah, mercury and uh, like the process of identification, analyzing of mercury, and uh, only using one reagent. Okay, now, <clears throat> next, so this is the reaction, yeah, mercury sulfide, we add a little bit uh, uh, chlo hydrogen chloride, yeah, uh, you can see here what we ha have is mercury 2 chloro uh, sulfide, yeah, and then it, it, it will be in the form of white precipitate. Uh, and this will be the reaction A. And further, we add this precipitate, this white precipitate with hydrogen sulfide further. And you can see here what we have is changing from a mercury to chlorosulfide. It became mercury sulfide. sulfide. And then this, uh, the A precipitate is in white color, whereas the B precipitate will be in black color. Okay, now, <clears throat> so you can see here the the uh, Ka, the constant, the the Ka value of mercury to sulfate is four times ten to the negative fifty four. Negative fifty four. It's really really low, the number. Then that's the reason. Mercury 2 sulfide is one of the least soluble precipitate. So it's it's too difficult to, to dissolve mercury 2 sulfide. Why? Because you can see here uh, the Ka is 4 times to the 10 to the negative of minus 54. So the number is really, really small. So that's why the least the, the least soluble precipitate. And you can see here, uh, if you mix it with water, it will be insoluble. If you mix it with hot dilute nitric acid, it will be insoluble. Uh, if you dissolve it in alkali hydroxide, it will be insoluble. Yeah. And also in ammonium sulfide, in ammonium sulfide, it also will be uh, dissolved. It, it, it will be insoluble. Now, since this is uh, least soluble, what do you guys think? Do you guys think, uh, is there any, any, uh, Chemicals that will dissolve this. What do you guys think? <clears throat> Anything that you can think maybe will dissolve our stubborn chemical here? <laughs> hmm? What do you guys think? Huh? Any idea? 
No? <laughs> okay. It's okay because we're still learning, right? It, it doesn't matter if you guys don't have any idea. Okay? Now, so you can see here, if we have sodium sulfide, sodium sulfide will dissolve the stubborn mercury sulfide. So if we have mercury sulfide in the precipitate form, uh, we, we add it with uh, sodium sulfide, it will form disulfomercurate 2 complex. Remember, if we have iron, then it will have a solution. It, it, it will The precipitate will disappear. But then, if we add ammonium chloride, again to here, then mercury 2 sulfide will precipitate again. <clears throat> so the first chemical that will dissolve uh, mercury sulfate is what we call sodium sulfide. No, sodium sulfide, why, why it dissolves? Because it will form uh, the sulfomercurate 2 complex ion. Now, the next, the next chemical that will be able to dissolve mercury sulfide is what we call aqua regia. Aqua regia and mercury 2 chloride. So if we, if we add aqua regia means is the mixture of uh, hydrochloric acid and uh, nitric acid. So if we mix hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and mercury 2 chloride, yeah, the stubborn mercury sulfate uh, will be dissolved. It will become mercury 2 chloride. Yeah. So you can see here, yeah. So 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 if we if we add mercury sulfide with uh, hydrogen chloride and uh, nitric acid we will it will form mercury chloride mercury to chloride and the mercury to chloride is dissolved so there won't be any precipitation anymore so for this reaction even though you have a precipitation, uh, the, the precipitation is not due to mercury sulfide, but due to sulfur. Yeah, the sulfur color is, what color is sulfur? White, yeah, white precipitate, okay? Now, so sulfur here will stay as a white precipitate. And, and if we want to further dissolve this to make sure that we don't have any uh, stubborn mercury sulfide, then we can react this, this solution yeah, with uh, nitric acid. Yeah, nitric acid. And you can see here, it will form a uh, sulfate and uh, it will form also nitrogen oxide gas. Yeah. Then this is 
uh, so the, the the process to dissolve mercury sulfate using aqua regia will be two steps yeah two steps to make sure there is no uh, precipitation the first step yeah we reacted with the aqua regia which is a mix of hydrogen chloride and nitric acid and you can see here the mercury to chloride is already dissolved but then we still have white precipitation but the white precipitation is due to the sulfur formation yeah and we to to avoid confusion yeah because we want to make sure that uh, it is not a mercury sulfide that that are dissolved uh, that are uh, precipitate then we react this reaction again with nitric acid yeah without chloride then it form a sulfate anion and hydrogen plus yeah and then nitrogen oxide gas then for sure uh, we know we can conclude that mercury sulfate sulfate sulfide is dissolved in aqua regia <clears throat> this is only mercury we have so many cation i don't that's why i i i i ask you guys to study independently right because there is no way uh, i can explain the whole thing in class yeah <clears throat> now Next, if we react mercury sulfide with ammonia solution, yeah, so you can he see here if we have, for example, uh, mercury 2 plus, yeah, we reacted with uh, uh, ammonia, yeah, ammonia, then uh, in the presence of nitric, yeah, then it will form a mercury oxide and mercury to amidonitrate yeah you can see here it has the down arrow what is the meaning by down arrow here so how this chemical the product will be reacted will be formed what what is the form of this mercury to oxide and mercury to amido nitrate hmm? precipitate 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 yeah so it will have a precipitate and we call this salt yeah salt now this salt it will sublime at atmospheric pressure so sublime what is the meaning by sublime sublimation so what is the meaning by sub sublime <clears throat> so the precipitate will change into ga gas gas solid yeah gas gas uh, gas form so it means it won't it won't stay longer in 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 uh, in the atmospheric pressure so it means like if you want to have uh, this kind of salt, you need to uh, put it in a special container so that it won't be changing into a gas form. Yeah.
Can this this? Okay. Now, next, if we react mercury, yeah, mercury sulfide with uh, sodium hydroxide, uh, then it will form a brownish red precipitate. Yeah. Now, this is if we add small amount. Now, if we add stoichiometric amount, so it means like we we reacted according to the stoichiometric mole, yeah, the precipitate will turn yellow. Why it turn yellow? Because it will form a mercury to oxide. So the mercury to oxide color is yellow. <clears throat> okay, now let's see the reaction. So if we have mercury 2 plus, we add a uh, stoichiometric amount of hydroxide, uh, it will form a mercury oxide. Uh, precipitate the color will be what red or yellow the color will be red or yellow yellow huh? yellow, man. yellow yellow yeah remember small amount the color is red but stoichiometric amount this is a stoichiometric amount right because uh, it, it the, the the concentration uh, the mole, uh, it's already in the uh, stoichiometric uh, proportion. So that's why uh, it will form a mercury oxide in yellow color. Yeah. <clears throat> now, so, so we have uh, insoluble mercury oxide when we reacted with hydro, uh, uh, sodium hydroxide. Yeah, sodium hydroxide or uh, I hydroxide ion. Now, what happens if we want to dissolve it? So if we want to dissolve it, right, we can react it with acid. Yeah, this product, yeah, when we react it with acid, it will dissolve. It will dissolve. And <clears throat> this reaction, uh, you can differentiate it, the mercury 2 from mercury 1. So look at our last week note. Yeah, What happened when you react mercury 1 with sodium hydroxide? What happened? Uh, because for this case, for the mercury to oxide, uh, when you react mercury to oxide with sodium hydroxide, it will form a black, it, it will form a yellow precipitate, right? But then when you react with acid, the yellow precipitate, it will dissolve. Later we can see <clears throat> it said here that this type of reaction, you can use it to differentiate between mercury 1 and mercury 2.
<clears throat> now, so next, uh, so we already learned about uh, Mercury. Now, second cation that we will be learned is bismuth. Now, bismuth here, the character, the physical character is brittle. What is the meaning by brittle? Apa artinya brittle? <clears throat> what is the meaning by brittle? Hmm. Iron brittle? Rapuh. Rapuh. Ya, jadi bismuth ini dia rapuh brittle. Now, why bismuth is brittle? Because it has a crystalline, yeah, crystalline formation, and then the color is reddish white metal, <coughs> reddish white. And you can see here, uh, compared to other metal. The melting point is quite low because the melting point is only 271.5 degrees Celsius. So it's quite low because mostly, like most metal, usually uh, they have a melting point like above 500 degrees Celsius. So that's why a bismuth in this case is brittle. Yeah. Now, so let's see here. What is how we can see the insoluble and soluble? So for bismuth, it is insoluble in a hydrochloric acid. Why it's insoluble in hydrochloric acid? Because the standard potential for a bismuth in hydrochloric acid is 0.24. Yeah. But you can see here. Bismuth will be dissolved in oxidizing acid such as uh, concentrated nitric acid, aqua regia, and hot concentrated sulfuric acid. So it means like if you want to use sulfuric acid, you cannot use it in regular in room temperature. You need to warm it up before you can dissolve bismuth. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the reaction, right? If you have a concentrated nitric acid, when you react it with bismuth, it will form bismuth 3 plus. So it, it is dissolved, yeah? Bismuth dissolved in concentrated nitric acid. And then the second reaction is you react bismuth with aqua regia. Uh, aqua regia is a mix between hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. Yeah, it is also dissolved in aqua regia. Yeah, you can see it has a bismuth three plus. And then if you use hot concentrated uh, sulfuric acid, it is also forming a bismuth three plus. Then it means bismuth is dissolved in hot concentrated sulfuric acid yeah but remember hydrogen chloride by itself won't dissolve bismuth 
So you need to mix uh, hydrogen chloride with uh, hydrogen nitride, nitrate before you can uh, dissolve bismuth. Uh, this is this is only a question. Uh, you guys haven't started kinetics uh, lab, right? Yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, what day is your kinetic lab? When when is uh, it Monday, ma'am. What time? At one p.m. <clears throat> so. I thought maybe we change the Friday class to another day, but I think it's impossible, right? Oh, well, how about the qualitative and quantitative uh, lab? When is the schedule? After UTS. No, I know, but like uh, uh, when 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 you are supposed oh, to. Friday, 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 man. Friday. Friday also. Okay, so before the. Okay, so it's impossible for us to change the schedule, right? Because you guys have a packed schedule, okay? Because I thought maybe like Friday we have a short day, right? But it's there is no way, okay? <clears throat> now, so let's see. So bismuth, remember bismuth ion has a tet tetravalent and pentavalent, yeah? So that's what we call bismuth 3 and bismuth 5. Yeah. Now, but the most common one is bismuth three, the, the, the bismuth three plus. Yeah. This is the tetra tetravalent tetravalent bismuth. Now, if you if we react the bismuth with a uh, hydroxide, it will form a bismuth hydroxide. The tetravalent the tetravalent uh, bismuth. If we react with hydroxide, it will form a bismuth hydroxide. Now, this bismuth hydroxide is what we call is we can categorize it as a weak base. Yeah, it's not a strong base, but weak base. Now, this bismuth salt, yeah, it will hydrolyze readily. It will hydrolyze readily. Now, this is this is the reaction, yeah. <clears throat> this is the reaction. Oh, I I make a mistake here because I don't use uh. Hydrolyze. One second. <laughs> so you should have this type of arrow. Oh, one second. Yeah, so in chemistry, you need to be careful. Yeah, uh, one arrow is different from two arrow like this. So uh, I cannot make a mistake. So so you should have these two arrow. So readily hydrolyzed. So it means it can it can form bismuth oxide cation. Yeah, but then it can readily also uh, form a bismuth three plus, yeah. When you react it with uh, hyd uh, water, so that's why we call it uh, hydrolyzed. <clears throat> Finish this. Okay. Now, so remember what we have here is 
bismutil. Bismutil ion. Now the bismutil ion here, uh, it can form insoluble salt. So if you reacted this bismutil uh, ion with a chloride, yeah, hydrogen chloride, it will form bismutil chloride or BiOCl. Yeah, uh, bismutil chloride. Now, this is what happened. So it has an insoluble salt. Salt. Now, what happened if we have pentavalent bismuth? So pentavalent bismuth is BiO3 negative ion. Now, this pentavalent bismuth, it will have insoluble in water if it this one is formed with uh, it's it's uh, it's reacting with other uh, cation, yeah. Then it will form a salt, right? Uh, the salt will be insoluble in water. Okay, now let's see. So now let's see uh, what are the reaction of, of bismuth three ion. Yeah, bismuth tetravalent ion. So you can see here uh, we will be studying it by using a 0.2 molar uh, solution of, of bismuth three nitrate. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> this solution it contains. 3 to 4% nitric acid. Now, so when we do this, yeah, when we do this, uh, what we have will be bismuth 3 plus. Yeah. Now, the first reagent that we can use to identify bismuth 3 plus is hydrogen sulfide. Now, we react bismuth 3 plus with hydrogen sulfate. And it will form bismuth sulfate. The bismuth sulfate is a black precipitate. Yeah. It's black precipitate. <coughs> Okay, hey, now this bismuth sulfide, it, it won't be dissolved in cold dilute acid or in ammonium sulfide. But if you have a hot concentrated hydrochloric acid, this bismuth sulfide will be dissolved. So you can see the reaction here. Uh, you have bismuth sulfate in the black precipitate form. You add hydrogen chloride, but the hydrogen chloride should be a uh, bubble boiling. Yeah? And you will form a bismuth 3 plus. Yeah, bismuth 3 plus. Now, the bismuth 3 plus means the bismuth 
sulfide is already dissolved. Yeah. Another uh, another thing for this reaction, yeah, uh, hydrogen sulfide gas will be uh, released. Okay, so you can see here, uh, this is this is uh, one of the reaction uh, to identify a bismuth. Yeah, so we can react it with uh, hydrogen sulfate. Yeah, and then if we want to dissolve it, we need to react it with hot hydrogen chloride. Yeah. And another identification is uh, hydrogen sulfide gas will be released from the reaction. Now, how about with hot dilute nitric acid? Uh, also, you can see here, if we have hot dilute nitric acid, uh, we can also dissolve the bismuth sulfide. Yeah, but... In this case, uh, there is still another precipitation uh, came out from this reaction, which is a sulfur. Yeah, the bismuth itself is already dissolved, but the sulfur is still in white precipitation, and also we still have a nitrogen oxide gas released from the reaction. So, uh, hot dilute nitric acid will dissolve bismuth, but in the reaction, will it will still have a precipitation, but it is not due to the bismuth. It is due to the sulfur. <clears throat> now, next, if we have ammonium solution. <clears throat> so the previous two reagents that we use are salt. Uh, uh, no, sorry, are acid, right? Uh, hot concentrated and hot dilute. Uh, both will dissolve uh, bismuth sulfide, but uh, the other one, the dilute one, the hot dilute nitric acid, will still give us uh, sulfur. Yeah, and the sulfur is uh, again give us a white precipitate. Now, uh, what happens if we react the bismuth tetravalen with a uh, uh, ammonium solution? Yeah. So what happened is, uh, it will form a precipitate again. Uh, the precipitate is what we call. Uh, bismuth hydroxide nitrate, yeah, and this precipitate will be insoluble in excess reagent. Yeah. So later you can see uh, this reaction. 
will make you able to differentiate between bismuth from copper or cadmium. Okay, finish this. Now, so if we have hydrogen, sodium hydroxide, right? Uh, if we react it with uh, hydrox, uh, with bismuth, it will form a bi bismuth hydroxide. Uh, and you can see here, uh, it is a precipitate, yeah? Uh, slightly uh, <clears throat> in uh, excess reagent in cold solution. Uh, so this is the reaction. So this is what happened. Okay. Now, so what happened if we react this bismuth hydroxide with acid? So the one that we have a precipitation before, if we react with acid, it will... Okay. Now, the one that we have a precipitation, uh, if we react with acid, it will form a, a bismuth 3 plus, and bismuth, bismuth 3 plus is soluble. So it means like the bismuth hydroxide here, it will be soluble in acid. Okay, now, but if we uh, heat it, right? If we heat this reaction, and when it's boil, the water will be uh, will be uh, evaporate, yeah. And when the water are evaporate, the bismuth three plus it will change into uh, bismuth oxide hydroxide, and uh, this is a solution, uh, no precipitate. When it lose water. Uh, it will become a precipitate with a yellowish white color. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so it's 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 kind of unique, right? Uh, when you react with uh, hydroxide, it will form a precipitate. Uh, when you react again the the precipitate with as acid. Uh, it will have it, it. It will dissolve again. But then, if you boil it and the water are evaporated, then the 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 dissolving bismuth it will make a precipitate, and the precipitate have a yellowish white color. Yeah. So this is this is one way. You can identify tetravalent bismuth. Yeah. <clears throat> Finish this. Finish. Finish. Okay. Now, now let's see hydrated and dehydrated. So both of both of the hydrated and the high dehydrated precipitate precipitate you can oxidize with four to six drops of hydrogen peroxide now when you oxidize oxidize it with hydrogen peroxide the yellowish uh, white precipitate will be changing into yellowish brown bismuth yeah, <clears throat> yellow, yellowish brown bismuthate ion. Yeah. So meaning the solution. Yeah, you can you cannot see a uh, precipitate here. Yeah, it means you have a yellowish white uh, precipitate, right? 
and then you add hydrogen peroxide. So it will become a solution with a yellowish brown color. So the color of the solution, not the color of precipitate, is yellowish brown. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, until this part, do you guys have any question? Do you guys have any question? No? Everything clear or everything confusing? <laughs> huh? There is no response. Clear or confusing? <coughs> I think for this uh, topic, there are memorization again. Yeah, it's it's all memorization. But I think once you understand the step, yeah, uh, you should sort of can um, make a logic behind it. And once you like uh, understand, you don't have to like memorize it word by word, but at least like you you can understand the concept. Yeah. Now, next, we still have time, right? We still have, um, let's say, five more minutes. Yeah, uh, five more minutes. Uh, let's study about copper. Now, copper here, you can see it's light red metal yeah light red metal and <clears throat> it's soft and malleable what is the meaning by malleable Malle malleable hmm? what is the meaning by malleable Luna ya, jadi bisa di bisa di apa bentuk gitu ya. Nah, jadi kalau brittle tadi kita ginikan aja dia patah. Tapi kalau malleable dia bisa bisa dibengkokkan gitu ya. Nah, malleable bisa dibengkokkan. Nah, kalau kalian lihat tadi bismut berapa melting pointnya? What is the melting point for bismut? 271.5 degrees Celsius. Now, when you compare to copper, the melting point is 1038 degrees Celsius. So it's much higher. The melting point of copper is much higher compared to a bismuth. Yeah. Compared to bismuth. <clears throat> nah, sekarang next uh, we study about the reagent. So when you react copper with hydrochloric acid, it will be insoluble. Why insoluble? Because the uh, potential standard for copper is 0.34. Yeah. So it's insoluble in hydrochloric acid. But if you mix hydrochloric acid uh, with copper and then we have like oxygen, uh, so, so we supply oxygen into the reaction. So uh, there are some dissolution may take place. Yeah. Now, but again, copper dissolve in concent medium concentrated nitric acid, right? and then copper also dissolve in hot concentrated sulfuric acid. Copper also dissolve in aqua regia. So hydrochloric acid by itself won't dissolve copper. But when you mix hydrochloric acid with uh, hydrogen nitrate, 
then copper will will be dissolved. And then you can see here, these three reaction will release gas also. For nitric acid, it will release nitrogen oxide gas. Now for sulfuric acid, it will release uh, sulfur, uh, sulfur dioxide gas. And for aqua regia, also it will release nitrogen oxide gas. Yeah, so copper dissolve in nitric acid, hot sulfuric acid, and aqua regia. But it won't be dissolved in hydrochloric acid by itself. Okay, now until this point, do you guys have any question? No. So if there is no more question, uh, you can see I can only share with you guys until copper. So we haven't studied about antimony and so on with group two. And next week, we need to continue with group three. Yeah. So I ask for your cooperation. Now, so you need to independently study the rest of group two. Okay. Okay. Uh, if no more question, see you next week. We will have we will meet offline next week, isn't it? Yolanda? Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. See you next week. Bye.